The animation that you are about to see is a dynamic representation of an infection spreading through a transmission network over time. The data come from the National Longitudinal Study of Adolescent Health. And the animation uses a new method of network analysis to demonstrate how small differences in reported behavior can potentially explain the large racial disparities in HIV infection observed in the United States. The two behavioral patterns we examine are selective mixing, which is a tendency to choose partners from one's own group, and concurrent partnerships, which are partnerships that overlap in time. Together, these produce large differences in the structure of a transmission network and in the reachable path of infection. The animated network has four types of people. Circles are women, squares are men, and they belong to either a gray or white group reflecting their race. Active partnerships are indicated with a gray line, and individuals move close to the person they are partnered with. Concurrency is defined by a person having more than one active partnership at a time. The dynamic network will simulate the partnerships that happen over a 10-year period in a population of 10,000 young adults. To facilitate visualization, our animation will focus on the 600 or so individuals that could eventually become infected. We start with 10 infected persons. They are shown as larger nodes here. These nodes are chosen at random, and the length of the simulation ensures that the results are not influenced by the sex or race of our starting choices. When a partnership forms between an infected and an uninfected node, transmission is possible. So this partnership is added to what we call the reachable path. These transmitting ties are preserved in the animation to show how the reachable path grows over time. Note how these ties are colored red or blue. This codes for concurrency at the time the partnership started. Red shaded ties in the reachable path indicate that when this partnership started, one or both partners had a concurrent partnership. Blue indicates that both partners were monogamous. Gray indicates that the partnership is currently active, but is not involved in transmission, so is not part of any reachable path. These ties disappear once they have ended. Note that some nodes that appear as isolates during the animation may have active partnerships that are not shown because their partners do not occur in a sequence that defines one of the reachable paths. The animated partnerships match the length, concurrency, and selective mixing reported by participants in the Ad Health survey. In the simulation, as in the survey data, concurrent partnerships are rare. Most people have at most one partner at a time. But on any single day, 4-5% to of people do have more than one ongoing partnership, and these concurrent partnerships play a large role in the growth of the reachable paths. Note how much faster the big, red, high concurrency path is growing, and how small the blue paths remain. In this last frame of the movie, we change the layout to show each generation in the reachable path from the initially infected case descending downwards in time as a tree. You can see concurrency at work here, especially in the largest path on the far right. There are more people infected in every generation, and more generations infected. While less than 5% of the partnerships in the simulation over the 10 years were concurrent, these make up 50% of the reachable paths. The model of the dynamic sexual partnership network used here was based on data from the third wave of the National Longitudinal Study of Adolescent Health. Participants in the Ad Health study are a representative sample of the U.S. population 19 to 25 years old. The simulations were run many times to generate data for the statistical analysis reported in the paper. This illustrative animation uses one of these simulations. While concurrency is rare, we found that on average a 5% daily prevalence of concurrency doubled epidemic potential compared to a population with the same number of monogamous partnerships. In the Ad Health survey, the reported rates of concurrency differ slightly by race, 9% for non-Hispanic blacks compared to 4% for non-Hispanic whites. Our simulation suggests that this small difference nearly triples the racial disparity in epidemic potential. From a prevention standpoint, however, this is also good news. It suggests that a small change in behavior could lead to a large reduction in both epidemic potential and HIV prevalence disparities.